The Elcro ESP32 terminal is a nice compact unit with built-in LCD touchscreen and color camera. There are ports all around the perimeter including a USB-C charging port and SD card slot. Note the two analog and two digital I.O. ports. Oh, and there's some extra goodies in the box, like this bird sticker. And some more stickers. An Elecro badge. An ink pen. And even a snazzy bounded notebook with page marker. Quite a nice touch. I noted the clear badge has removable paper backing. When you plug in the USB power, a preloaded program comes up. Best I could tell, it really doesn't do anything, but it is a good demo of screen resolution, colors, and touchscreen functionality. After confirming the unit works as expected, it was time to load up the programming software. While the ESP32 terminal is based on a powerful ESP32 microcontroller, you can in fact use the Arduino IDE development suite to load programs into the unit. I downloaded and installed the latest Arduino IDE at the time and installed it per the site's instruction. Now the IDE will need to be set up per Elecro's own website instructions. First is a copy and paste the ESP32 file package URL into the preferences for Board Manager. Now select Tools, Board Manager, then scroll down to ESP32 package and install it. Be sure you don't run out of disk space like I did. Ugh. Once installed successfully, you will find the ESP32 board is now listed in the tools menu. And in this case, select the ESP32 S3. There are a bunch of additional settings you'll want to cross reference with the Elecro's wiki page. With the IDE setup finished, the SP32 terminal can once again be plugged into the computer. You should now see an active COM port assigned to the terminal. To program the unit, you will need to momentarily press both the boot and reset buttons at the same time. But before programming, I needed to double check the settings, which had an item or two not set correctly. At first I had some gibberish until I reset the baud rate from 9600 baud to 115200. Another boot reset. And success! Note the screen will be blank in this mode. Okay, so I think I've completed all the setup that I needed to do. It was a little interesting going through all the steps to get to run. And it turns out I was, I was just about to get to the point where I can start to try to upload something. I couldn't quite figure out the button sequence for the reset. The way they described it, it seemed like you needed to press one button and hold down the other button. But it turns out, no, you just need to, to hold down the boot button and then tap the reset button. And that got me into the the prompt where it says ready to upload. So now, I guess I'm ready to upload. <laughs> so let's see if I can upload a sample program to this little guy and see what it does. Okay, so I first tried copy pasting a small program from their online tutorial. It's some simple drawing commands from the Lavian graphics library. But I got a compile error due to a missing header file. I then realized I likely hadn't installed a graphics library and did so after finding it in the library manager. But it still failed to compile. On Elecro's website, they have a link to Lesson Code, which I downloaded and extracted. Not lesson Code. Inside, there's an ESP32 code directory, which has a bunch of sample programs just for the terminal. I opened up a program called A-LCD into the IDE which I compiled successfully and downloaded into the terminal. When the download is finished, hit the reset button and the program will run. In this case, it just cycles multiple colors on the screen and then some text. Not too exciting, but hey, it finally works. Feeling a little frisky, I modified the code to alter some colors and text. Alignment is a bit off, but I was happy to see the results. You did subscribe, didn't you? 
Next was something called A Camera. Ah, it activates the built-in camera. So the orientation was a bit off. On a hunch, I started poking around the included libraries and eventually found some documentation for the LaVeyan Graphics Library, where there is a camera rotation function. Changing that number gave me a much better orientation. The camera works well enough, but don't expect HD video at high frame rates. I tried the buzzer code that, uh, uh, simple things in life, I guess. Yeah! Anyways, you can change the code to select a different tone in the array. Now, speaking of array, I noticed that their program was only playing one Oops. tone out of the whole array, despite being in a loop. So I added a couple lines to step through the array with a small delay. Now we can unravel the mystery of what the whole song sounds like. <laughs> the touch program doesn't display anything, but relays your finger position coordinates to the serial monitor. Online schematics show you the I.O. port pin assignments, but lack reference. So I use a voltmeter to find the ground and power pins to set my reference point. Then added my own marker for future reference. Note that Elecro does sell matching connectors, but I found some compatible ones in my parts stash. Probably meant for canine. The ADD program worked pretty good once I hooked up a low voltage power supply to the inputs. Varying the input voltage changed the port values as expected. Just be sure not to go over 5 volts. It's a 12-bit ADD converter, so 4095 is the max value. There was also a digital output toggle. So I clutched together a LED using parts from the previously reviewed Elcro stem kit. No surprise, it worked. This gave me an idea. As the stem kit included a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So, once I got the digital and analog input pins working correctly and, and functioning really good, I had an idea, and that was this. This is a little temperature humidity sensor that came in one of the Elecro Arduino Experimenters kit. And I said, hey, I wonder if I can adapt this temperature sensor to work with the unit here. And so I first I got the, um, the the libraries for the DHT11 and I plugged it in and I got it working. And believe it or not, it worked pretty much right off the bat. I thought fantastic. Which they conveniently had a sample sketch I could steal, uh, I mean utilize off of Elecro's website. The code worked in the serial monitor. And so then what I did was I just copied over the earlier uh, example sketch that showed the LCD screen and writing its text on that. And so I combined the two and now I have a working temperature display and humidity all in a nice little package. And I thought, Dad, this would be neat. I always wanted kind of something like this. Maybe put it in a workshop or something and let me know how what the temperature is. And I'm really happy that I got it working. That's pretty neat. So, going back to the preferences screen, I found out that the newer version of the Arduino IDE links the library files to the sketch location. Now, I think this caused my earlier build errors due to having changed project locations. With that set, I made sure to install the LVGL graphics library. I also installed the examples for future experimentation and reference. In the code examples from Elecro is an LVGL test sketch. Which I loaded and compiled successfully. Hey, it loaded back the example program the unit came preloaded with. I likely will be reverse engineering this sketch. The terminal is advertised with being compatible with a third party Squareline Studio UI development suite. 
This is a drag and drop user interface design tool. It's a free download program for various platforms. Once started, you can create a new blank project or select a demo project, which is what I did. Like this clock face. Before you can compile a demo, you'll need to configure a header file to the specifics of the controller board. It's mostly pin assignments based on what I saw in the working examples from Elecro sketches. You'll need to uncomment and change pin assignments as needed according to the embedded instructions. Then change the IDE sketchbook location to point to the right place. Compile and upload that sucker. And it works! Err, orientation is off again. Let's tweak the resolution and orientation values. Ah, much better. I see dots, but there's only one screen. Regardless, it works! I thought I would try my hand at making a blank project by dragging and dropping widgets. You can easily add, move, and resize predefined graphics and text to objects. Now export the UI files and compile and upload using the Arduino IDE like before. Yay! Wait. Wait a minute. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I guess one more thing to figure out. Oh, I forgot to point out the other ports such as the I2C and UART serial ports. It even has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now you can also use a single cell battery for power as well. Uh, now the company is quoting an average current of around 80 milliamps, so this unit seems to be pretty power efficient. So my final thoughts are a little mixed on this one. I quite like the idea behind the ESP32 terminal. Uh, it's a really nicely built and functional unit with a lot of potential. However, newbies will likely have some trouble due to the somewhat scatterbrained online documentation and nuances of the system. Uh, in fact, it took me quite a bit of time and experimentation just to get to the point I am at now. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. But uh, someone with a moderate experience with Arduinos or ESP32 could really have some fun with it. And in fact, I already have a few ideas for projects I could use this module. What are you looking at? Hi, thanks for watching. Please take a look at the video description below for special Hobbyview sales and discounts. Your purchases help support this channel. Happy modeling!